I'll start by reading Luke 20, 17. And he beheld them and said, What is this then that is written? The stone which the builders rejected, the same has become the head of the corner. Now I'm going to read what Christ was talking about that was written about the stone that the builders rejected. This is Psalms 118, verses 22 and 23. The stone which the builders refuse has become the headstone of the corner. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. And that was written roughly a thousand years before Christ passed the question in Luke. Now I'm going to read 1 Peter 2 verses 6 and 7 about the stone which the builders rejected. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Sion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Unto you therefore which believe he is precious, but unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner. And that speaks strongly against what was written in Psalms that I read about it in chapter 118. This is the next verse through 27, verses 24 to 27. This is the day which the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Save now, I beseech thee, O Lord, O Lord, I beseech thee, send now prosperity. Blessed be he that cometh in the name of the Lord. We have blessed you out of the house of the Lord. God is the Lord which hath shewed us light. Bind the sacrifice with cords, even unto the horns of the altar. Now I'm going to read what Amos spoke against that. Amos 3, verses 13 and 14. Hear ye and testify in the house of Jacob, saith the Lord God, the God of hosts, that in a day that I shall visit the transgressions of Israel upon him, I will also visit the altars of Bethel, and the horns of the altar shall be cut off and fall to the ground. So with that in mind, I'll read... Luke 20:17 again and continue through to verse 26 this time and he beheld them and said what is this then that is written the stone which the builders rejected the same has become the head of the corner whosoever shall fall upon that stone shall be broken but on whomsoever it shall fall it will grind him to powder and the chief priests and the scribes the same hour sought to lay hands on him and they feared the people for they perceived that he had spoken this parable against them and they watched him and sent forth spies which should feign themselves just men that they might take hold of his words so that so they might deliver him unto the power and authority of the governor and they asked him, saying, Master, we know that thou sayest and teachest rightly, neither acceptest thou the person of any, but teachest the way of God truly. Is it lawful for us to give tribute unto Caesar or no? But he perceived their craftiness and said unto them, Why tempt ye me? Shew me a penny, whose image and superscription hath it? They answered and said, Caesar. And he said unto them, Render therefore unto Caesar the things which be Caesar's, and unto God the things which be God's. And they could not take hold of his words before the people, and they marveled at his answer and held their peace. So they couldn't take hold of his words then, and they can't take hold of his words now. Though there are many ministers of Satan which say that Christ justified taxes and tithes. Now keep in mind that when they came to him they did it with the intent to turn him over to the power and authority of the governor but again he perceived their craftiness. I say 
that what he was saying is render the goats to Caesar who is dead and the sheep to God it could be thought of just just the same by the way he said it he, t he spoke in a way that he spoke for the reasons that he spoke that way so again he did not say to pay tax and tithes again about tribute I'm going to read Luke 23 verses 1 to 4 and the whole multitude of them arose and led him unto Pilate and they began to accuse him saying we found this fellow perverting the nation and forbidding to give tribute to Caesar saying that he himself is Christ a king and Pilate asked him saying art thou the king of the Jews and he answered him and said thou sayest it then said Pilate to the chief priests and to the people I find no fault in this man and again about tribute Matthew 17 verses 24 to 27 and when they were come to Capernaum they that received tribute money came to Peter and said doth not your master pay tribute he saith yes and when he was come into the house Jesus prevented him saying what thinkest thou Simon of whom do the kings of the earth take custom or tribute of their own children or of strangers Peter saith unto him of strangers Jesus saith unto him then are the children free notwithstanding lest we should offend them go thou to the sea and cast an hook and take up the fish that first cometh up and when thou hast opened his mouth thou shalt find a piece of money that take and give unto them for me and thee he didn't say go out and buy a mandatory fishing license and cast a hook he told Peter to take up the first fish so that he could pacify the tax collector with a free coin okay now with these things in mind I'm going to read Romans 13 verses 1 to 8 which I've talked about many times before because the powers that be that Paul was referring to are not the powers that not the false powers that the established church ministers of Satan talk about uh, a lot in the US since there's a voting that goes on and, and such they say that the powers they let people know or they tell people that the powers that be are these people who get voted in the, by the vote of man they might not say it that way but you, you know who I'm talking about so let every soul be subject unto the higher powers for there is no power but of God the powers that be are ordained of God whosoever therefore resisteth the power resisteth the ordinance of God and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation for rulers are not a terror to good works but to the evil Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power do that which is good and thou shalt have praise of the same for he is the minister of God to thee for good but if thou do that which is evil be afraid for he beareth not the sword in vain for he is the minister of God a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil wherefore ye must needs be subject not only for wrath but also for conscience sake for for this cause pay ye tribute also for they are God's ministers attending continually upon this very thing render therefore to all their dues tribute to whom tribute is due custom to whom custom fear to whom fear honor to whom honor owe no man anything but to love one another for he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law so I'll say it again as I have said before it's obvious here that the powers that be are ministers of God so other people's separation of church and state law is a bunch of crap now these ministers that they're that they're talking about in here 
powers that be ministers of God are the saints that's the saints that Paul was talking about judging out of God's house which isn't divided like other people's state church fornication that's going on that's been going on the you see the ministers the false ministers I should say and established by man church uh, receive a so-called nonprofit status is what they call it and what they're basically doing is they're saying well we don't need to pay the tax but they tell all their victims that come in there and pay them that they should pay the tax and the tithes hypocrites and of course their law side allows them their religions a non what they call a nonprofit status so they scratch each other's back and say they don't have anything to do with each other but they can't survive without each other and they're going down anyways you know the whore church and the whole state church established by man thing I've said before too that I'm in the body of Christ the church which I don't go to on Sundays and or Wednesdays like other people do or Saturdays or whatever I'm in church some people aren't in church and other people are in church so I'm going to talk about some of these corrupt false powers this is the salaries of members of the United States Congress 2012 that I pulled up online is just one source uh, I did see one other that claimed the same uh, hundred and seventy four thousand dollars a year and that does not include corporate kickbacks and whatever else they get their hands into and now I'm going to read one article that I found online. There's so many of them about that government's corruption, that counterfeit government. This is headed um, Congressional Corporate Kickbacks. And it looks like it's uh, basically a summary of a broadcast that was done. June 17th. There's a date here, June 17, 2004. Halliburton overcharges taxpayers billions while Dick Cheney pockets the profits. Enron execs literally cheer as they rape California while it burns. Republican corporate contributors receive a hundred times return on their bribery investment. Owning a congressman is so much cheaper and more lucrative than paying workers a decent wage. Now what? Well, tonight, in the early hours of the morning, when most everyone is asleep, the Republican Congress is set to give away $140 billion of your taxpayer money, three times the amount given in welfare to the U.S. poor annually, to line the guilt pockets of multi-millionaire CEOs. The money is meant to encourage corporations to outsource jobs abroad, and it will all come out of your paycheck. So here we have, from my point of view, and I, I don't want to uh, sound you know one-sided or, or sound uh, you know like I have I have a special interest, but I'm just saying ba from from where I've been sitting and doing the things that I've been doing, I've been uh, telling the truth of God for years um, you know, I've been online doing videos a lot of you know I've been doing videos for several years and and I'm watching people getting paid money to to destroy the people that are paying it I mean the, the, the these people these congressmen and these politicians, these, these people are sold, straight sold out for personal interest and for their corporate buddies. 
They don't. Uh, what are, what are they working for? There there is there is no good thing that these people do for the population. Nothing. And it's all going to shift. The whole the whole money system thing is going down the tubes. And there's going to be a time. Revelation 18, when the merchants of the earth weep and mourn because no one buys their merchandise. This whole uh, shift from the from the false powers to the saints, as as is happening, is uh, not the smoothest transition, I guess you could say. Uh, a lot of resistance on uh, part of corrupt persons to these. Uh, things that we're talking about but um, I'm looking I'm looking for to set the children free I'm not looking for for personal gain in this as a saint which he has raised up I did not put myself in this position this is something that my father who I know in heaven put me in this place as a saint I accepted it and you know the saints suffer for the body's sake you know so I haven't said much sometimes I've made some complaints about some things uh, I guess because uh, very upsetting things like uh, government taking my child uh, and this has happened to a lot of people you know that I know you know a lot of times people speak out uh, and speak truth against corruption you know these things happen you know so that this is this is it my child was was sold through the US court system by uh, a law transgressor judge who got paid a lot of money but he, but he damns himself by law for for that you know uh, going to you know I've been robbed locked up you know, it's just just terrible. I mean, ter terribly uh, disrespected by people uh, ever since Christ came into me in 2007. I've been in church ever since. That I don't leave. So I believe in this video what I'm saying or what I want to get across is uh, you know lend support to the Saints I'm not talking about money uh, I'm talking about you know taking the information that we have and and uh, you know giving it to other people you know passing it along helping this whole thing you know all this information get out because I mean I'm seeing a change it's not as fast as I would hope but I am seeing a change so support the Saints you know let's let's uh, phase these uh, false powers out those are those are not people that uh, you know Nobody can nobody could justify through Christ to um, employ these people. These are antichrists who go by their own laws. They make up laws that they sell for money, basically. So, I mean, there's a there's a something that's called a collection for the saints that's not a tithe I personally I, I don't mind doing some things you know doing some actual work I would care to garden if I had a place uh, where there was a lot of you know where there's some land where I can I'll get out there with a the shovel you know but here we got all this money going out to uh, to pay, what to pay corrupt persons and I don't have a shovel <laughs> You know, I'm not whining that I don't have a shovel, but I'm just saying, it, it, you know, I don't have a, I don't have a place to grow food, which I grow food and uh, you know give it away, give it to other people. What do these people do? 
You might as well call their paychecks welfare. You know, uh, overinflated welfare checks or something like that. So, I guess that's it. This is what I was led to talk about. Let's shift this thing. Let's get the power over to the saints, people who are telling the truth. Thank you.